Okay, so this is the biggest tabletop photo studio that my studio makes. This is the VS53 Versa Sweep. Uh, 53 is the actual width of the white background. The reason it's 53 inches wide is because that is the exact width of seamless photographic background paper. So if you do want to change the color, you can just buy a 53 inch wide um, roll of photo paper, any color you want, and it will just lay in here and you just clip it to the background. So it's a real uh, durable surface. It's made out of plastic and you can wash it if it gets dirty, things like that. But this does take up some room. It's five feet wide by about seven feet in depth is what you need. So we're gonna just take a, a few different shots in here with some different items, uh, small, medium, and large. And then back by popular demand, I mean, we may have uh, a little photo shoot with the chihuahuas that have showed up in a couple of other videos. Um, we'll see how that goes. But first of all, we've got a lamp in here and I have got the lamp positioned off of the background, um, probably about three feet from the very back. Now, because of the distance uh, of the object to the background, the background will not be pure white because there's gonna be some light fall off, uh, but that's okay because I'm actually kind of looking for a gradient um, where the, the light kind of goes from darker to lighter. It sets off the lamp. It's kind of a light colored lamp. Uh, I've got the accent lights. These are the AL2 accent lights. They have two bulbs, similar to the AL1, just with a second bulb. And let's see the settings on the camera. We are at, um, let's see, F7.1 and about a 50th of a second at ISO 400. So we're gonna sh shut off the lights and go ahead and take a shot. All right, so you can see where just behind the lamp is where the light fall off starts. There's the light from the accent lights that's casting actually uh, next to the lamp and it kind of creates that, that transition, which is actually pleasing. If you wanted it more of a white background, what you would do is put the lamp up near the very back and then you would put the lights back there and um, so you're lighting the background and the subject at the same time. That's more of the effect that you have on the smaller photo studios that are more compact where the light is kind of all concentrated in one area. When you're looking at the larger photo studios, you're working with depth, which can be really nice, which I'm about to show you in this next photo. Okay, so I mentioned that um, we're, we can work with depth when we have this larger photo studio. It's actually about five to six feet from the front where the lights are to the back. Now we could always move the lights closer to the back if we wanted the background to be wider. But right now I wanna take advantage of the depth and the, the effect of light fall off. And I'm gonna use this huge photo studio to photograph this uh, little tiny um, piece of hardware here. This is just one of our accessories for another item we sell, a portable green screen. It is a super clamp adapter. But I am actually gonna just put this right here I am using the accent lights as the key light and what they're doing coming from each side slightly at an angle is they're creating kind of, because this is reflective, uh, it's creating kind of a, a nice line up and down either side which gives this dimension and depth. Otherwise it's a pretty boring product to shoot. We could shoot it on all white but it's a little bit boring. Uh, and then I'm going to let the, the light fall off work for me so it'll be kind of light in the foreground and it'll transition to darker. It'll just give a nice effect. So. Uh, settings wise, I've got about the same as we had for the lamp. I've got 7.1 uh, f-stop and 50th of a second. Make sure the focus is correct. And there you go. So again, using a very large photo studio to photograph a small item, but we're taking advantage of some of the things that the VS53 offers, which is uh, a great distance from the front to the back. Also the AL2 accent lights, using that as more of the key light rather than a fill or uh, an accent or highlight. So we'll go back to some larger items now. Okay, so we're gonna do uh, one more shot here where we're using kind of the, the depth of the studio to give us um, some contrast with a clear glass and a bottle here. So we've got a little bit of that fade away gradient. Uh, we're using the accent lights the AL1 or the AL2 accent lights to kind of give a catch light in the bottle. You can kind of see a vertical um, line on either side of the bottle and the glass. They're both reflective. So what we're going to try to do is pop the cork and get a picture of this right as it's poured and try to get some of the... Ah, uh... oh, there we go. 
I guess the fizz, the, all right. It's oh, a little more than we bargained for. Wow. <laughs> all right, well, this is a one-time only shot. All right, so we'll get it like that. That's a cool shot. Okay, so we went back to a larger item, and I mentioned on the, la on the last one we showed how having a subject towards the front really uses the, uh, the depth to create that fall off and kind of that gradient from transition from light to dark, which is a desirable effect sometimes. Uh, but this time, uh, we wanted to take a picture of this beautiful orchid, and don't tell anybody, but it's fake but we wanted to have it more of just kind of that standard white background. So as I had mentioned before, we moved everything closer to the back. Uh, we used the accent lights. We're using them kind of both as an accent and a key light. And then the, the top lights here are also illuminating the flower. So if everything works well, it should pretty much be a pure white shot. And um, let's see what we get. And let's see, settings wise, we're F8 and a 50th of a second at ISO 400. And the light's off. And there you go. Okay, for the next photo, we are going to um, take a picture of a soprano saxophone. Now this is a shiny instrument, so it's gonna reflect the light uh, at different angles from where the lights are hitting it. The, the light from the key light here, the accent lights. Uh, so we're going to just kind of play around with positioning the lights at different um, angles and see what happens. So right now we have all the lights on. We've got the AL2 accent lights on either side. Uh, you can see each one's casting a little bit of a shadow on either side of the bell of the saxophone. It's kind of a cool look to it. So we'll take a shot like this. I've got the camera in the vertical position. And get ready to take the shot. We'll turn off the lights. And I am at... Uh, F8 and a 40th of a second here. All right, that's just a nice basic shot. Still a pretty white background, not a lot of light fall off or, or changing uh, gradient or anything. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna turn off uh, the bottom light here. So that is gonna give, uh, make it a little more of a dramatic photo where more of the light is coming from the accent lights. Still got the top light on here. It's gonna add some fill. And I'm probably going to need to uh, lower the shutter speed a little bit. So we're going to go down to a 30th of a second and see what that does. So a little more of a dramatic look from, than the first one. So what I'm going to do now, I still kind of like the fact that I'm getting some shadow uh, on the bell. I am going to... Bring this accent light up over here. Do the same thing on the other side. All right, we're gonna take that photo. Now you can see the shadows have shifted where the bell is and they're kind of going towards the back at a little bit of an angle. It's kind of cool, you can just kind of do what you want with it. Now if I wanted there to be a little more fall off, I could, um, bring the saxophone a little closer. But what I'm gonna do now is actually lay it down and get a horizontal shot. And I think I'm gonna position the accent lights there. Actually, I might as well bring it down low like that. Let's try, let's put this light back on. Great, so there's another angle of that saxophone and now I'm going to um, do the, uh, the accent lights from behind and see how that changes things. Focus should remain the same. Oh, and all right. 
All right, so now that we're done with that, uh, we've got a few different looks. See what we like of that, or we can use all the photos. Uh, we're going to stop with the inanimate objects, and I'm going to find the chihuahuas and uh, see how that goes. We can't exactly practice that, but um, we'll see what happens. Okay, so here are the two chihuahuas are going to be our models for this little photo shoot. This is Paco over here, uh, and this is Abby. She gets a little more nervous than he does. Okay, sit right here, girl. So there's an example of using the VS-53 in a lot of different ways from little tiny objects to little tiny dogs and some medium sized objects. A lot of things you can do with it, a lot of experimentation. If you have the room for it, you need something like this, this is a dynamite photo studio. So I hope you enjoyed watching, hope you enjoyed the tutorials, check out the other ones. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always check our website, get in contact with us there. Always happy to help. Uh, know that photography is definitely a journey and it's one well worth taking. So good luck, and if we can help, we'd look forward to hearing from you.